I've got a new exciting speaker to test out. This is the Triangle Borea BR02. It is a five and a quarter inch bookshelf speaker with a silk dome tweeter. These are made by the French company Triangle, but they are assembled in China. At least these um, lower level ones. This is the this is actually the cheapest one that Triangle makes. This is their absolute cheapest speaker. It retails anywhere from like four thirty to five hundred dollars. Um, I was able to get this one for four hundred fifty dollars, but I've heard that the prices can range because availability is limited. Uh, I was able to get mine right away. Like the first time I checked um, online, I was able to just purchase one and have it delivered to me in about three days. So things to note on the exterior is this rubber surround right here fits absolutely perfectly. There's a little bit of a gap here, but the precision required to get that to fit between both the mold making for this rubber piece and the milling out of the MDF on their CNC machine, their tolerances have to be really, really close to make this work. And this is just the first sample of of the kind of quality that uh, it was put into this speaker and how it was made. It may be assembled in China, but like there is a ton of quality in this thing. Triangle must have their quality control down on their manufacturing because the fit and finish on this is really, really good. So this, as I said, this is a one inch silk dome tweeter and this is a five and a quarter inch paper cone woofer with a phase plug like dust cap. It's, it's not a real phase plug. It moves with the entire woofer and the white paper on here is absolutely beautiful. I'm sure if you touch it too much with dirty hands, you're going to stain it and get you know, permanent fingerprints on it. So do your best to never touch that woofer. It will get dirty very, very quickly. I actually ordered the walnut finish, but the supplier that I got mine from sent me the black finish, which looks good, but I don't think it looks as good as the walnut. I'm not going to return it just because I like these ones and they work and I already have them. And returning things is a kind of a pain no matter who we, no matter who you go through. Um, so taking a look on the inside, I know usually in my videos I've taken them apart on camera, but forgive me that um, I'll use the here's one I prepared earlier line. This is the enclosure and things to note on the back is where the panel goes for the speaker binding posts and it has all the all the information here about the speaker. Um, it's a really nice thick chunk of ABS plastic with foam uh, taped to the inside. This is custom cut and these binding posts are really nice quality. Um, they're not as good as um, tube connectors, according to some, but I think they, they work just fine for the application and for the speed of manufacturing, they need to use this style. So I really like this. I like the attention detail to put some foam on here to help seal it. Um, you can see the edges of the shrink wrap here of, for the finish. Obviously it's not real. Um, we have some leftovers here from this, the wool lining, which if, as you probably noticed is black. I've never seen this stuffing be black before. And theoretically no one is ever supposed to open the speaker. So no one would know, but the design the, or the, the designers who built this wanted that to be black, which is probably more expensive because they wanted it to just be better. All right, so you see right there in the center of your screen at the bottom of the enclosure, that is, if it'll focus, that is the standoff for the crossover. So you can see they put little white um, pegs in there to isolate it from vibration. So the way they probably put that in is that 
this this was outside this this block in here was outside of the enclosure they screwed it down they or they screwed down the crossover onto it then glued that into place you'll also notice that there is internal bracing in here and there are two beams that go across one back here one up here you notice there's an indentation here this is one of the most clever design features I've seen in a speaker. The woofer actually presses hard up against here. And what that does is it creates another level of rigidity or another axis of rigidity. So not the woofer isn't just putting all of its like, you know, its kinetic force into the fascia and in, you know, into this front baffle. It's putting some of its force into here, which translates that into the side walls forward and backward rather than just trying to, you know, create um, a bunch of vibration in the front baffle here. Not only that, but it, it just mechanically adds some rigidity, even though they're not glued together. So that was really nice to see. Another manufacturing note is that this line, this transition here from the flat, from the truncated circle to the radius is very sharp. Here is the surround from this one, and you can see that is also very sharp. And to get those to match up, it would be a manufacturing nightmare, and I'm surprised they were able to do it, so, and like do it so well. And at this price point, at 450 bucks, uh, I'm blown away. And this really nice soft rubber. There are some markings on here, but I don't, I didn't see any that would indicate what kind of material this is. These plastichrome inlays are not molded into the part. They are just pressed in. Here's the one for the tweeter. And you can see these are really thick rubber. I'm going to guess they're EPDM of some kind and they were just double stick taped in there, which made it a little tricky to come out. Uh, the tool that I used is my favorite slotted screwdriver. And I just went in between, I just went in between the side of the enclosure and the edge of the rubber and stuck it down all the way and started to peel away. Uh, it's important if you wanna do this yourself, which I, don't exactly recommend if um, you're not comfortable with this is do not pry too hard against this corner because it's so sharp you're just going to dent it i did mar up mine in just a couple spots but i was able to um, be gentle enough that i probably wouldn't even have known if no one told me so moving on from the enclosure we have the woofer uh, i really like this woofer it is, it has Triangle's name on it, which doesn't mean that they make it, but it means that they've, you know, they if they were going to put their name on it, they've probably gone through the work of designing and engineering this driver for themselves, and they're more in control of the QC. A couple hints here at the quality is that these are silver coated connecting braid wires. I have never seen that before. It also has a vented spider, which is excellent, but it does not have a vented pull piece. So that's, that's a little bit disappointing, but I mean, silver braids, vented spider, you can't really ask for too much more other than it's a steel, it's a stamped steel frame and it rings really badly. So if you remember on my clips video that I did a little while back, I put some sticky tack, some blue tack on here to try and quiet down the frame. That's uh, a route you could take if you wanted to try and get a little extra performance for just a couple bucks. So that's about all I have to say about the, uh, the woofer. It also has their logo 
on there. Going on to the tweeter. Has a nice soft foam backing there. Heat sink. The only thing I don't like about silk domes from, I don't know, more of the mechanical perspective is that they're sticky and they attract dust and grit and you can never get it off. But I like that they put these guards in front of the tweeter because that prevents you from just stabbing it with your finger. So not a bad tweeter there. A little bit light duty, but it's all right. <laughs> So now the real uh, meat and potatoes of the of the speaker, the crossover. I'll insert some more detailed photos right now. But as you can see, it's uh, it's par for the course for any of these sub thousand dollar speakers. Even you know speakers that cost over a thousand dollars are going to have these. Um, medium grade components or the lower grade. The one nice thing that I like on this is they actually put in a poly capacitor on the tweeter circuit. Um, it's typical to see the air core inductors on tweeters, even the Klipsch, the $200 Klipsch had that. We still have the iron core inductor and the sand cast resistors and a, an electrolytic capa capacitor on the woofer circuit. So they went cheap on the woofer side, but they actually, you know, they put a little bit of extra money on the tweeter side, which is nice to see. Um, soldering is pretty good, except for that one is a little, uh, a little too much solder on that one. Otherwise not too bad. So taking a look at the schematic for that. Actually, I'll, I'll before we go into this, um, here's a couple photos just showing you the traces and components for the tweeter circuit and the woofer circuit. So you can just see which traces on the board do what. So now going into the the schematic here. On the tweeter circuit, the positive comes into a 6.8 ohm resistor into a 3.9 microfarad capacitor. Those are in series, goes to the tweeter, back to ground. And then in parallel there is a 0.33 millihenry inductor. So that's pretty standard stuff. That's just a, a second order crossover. Um, now on the woofer circuit, it's a little bit different than, to, than usual. You have a one millihenry inductor in series, goes to the woofer, back to ground, that's normal. And a 33 microfarad capacitor, which is pretty generous. That's a, you know, a good size capacitor. But then there is a resistor in series with that capacitor, which I haven't seen before. Usually if they put the, um, on these, you know, budget small part count crossovers, they would just put that in series just to quiet it down. Usually they don't do that on the woofer, but um, on here, and that just, what that does for that capacitor is it just changes the slope of the roll-off. So as you increase this value, I believe the roll-off gets a little bit steeper. Not to make it like a higher order crossover, but it will, um, it'll kind of bump up the curve right before it drops off. And it also will change the phase of this woofer, or it'll change the phase of the sound coming out of the woofer um, because a capacitor, when the signal goes into it, it changes the phase of the sound by like 90 degrees or 180 degrees. So if you can put a resistor in here and change that phase, you can make it better match what the tweeter is going to put out. So simple crossover, nothing uh, out of the ordinary really. If I didn't mention it before, this is a ported design. So, it, and it doesn't go that far in. I forgot to get measurements on that, but that's not super important. 
So I did do some numbers. Um, I did look up how much it would be to upgrade this crossover. And here is the Excel spreadsheet of that right now. So it's uh, it's about ninety dollars, just under, and that's without shipping or tax. So after shipping and tax, it you know imagine it'll be a bit over a hundred bucks, and that's pretty typical for these upgraded crossovers, or well, for upgrading these crossovers when you have six components like this. For the two speakers, it's going to be about a hundred bucks to upgrade the components. That what that will do is increase the quality of the current frequency response. Changing these values to different values is what will change the frequency response. And if you don't have testing gear to make sure that you're doing that properly, you're just going to screw things up. So if you don't have testing gear, but you want to upgrade the crossover, stick to the stock values here. I would be interested to see what GR Research and or Impulse Audio would be able to do if they got a hold of these things and tried to re-engineer the crossover because um, I, I haven't seen any graphs on the on the frequency response of this speaker. So I wonder if it would need any tweaking or if the stock values are good enough. I will put links in the description to both GR Research and Impulse Audio. Because they also make really good content on speaker upgrades and designing and engineering your own speakers. Uh, additionally, if you want a sound demo for this, I put in the sound demo for the Z Reviews channel because he has way better, um, he has way better equipment than I have for this sort of thing. Uh, there, there is no way that I'm going to be able to do a sound demo that does these speakers any justice. And you know, talking about the the sound quality of these speakers, they are uh, how do I want to say it? They're they're very soft. They're very smooth. Uh, they, they will take any song you put into them and just smooth it right out and make it nice and calm. Where all my other speakers have metal dome tweeters and they're very shouty and very, I wouldn't say harsh is a, is a kind of a negative word, but a lot, um, a lot more crisp. And the, the analogy that I thought of between one of these silk dome tweeters and the metal dome tweeters is when you're listening to the really high treble sounds, a metal dome tweeter is more like um, frying bacon on a frying pan or you know, just frying something very sizzly, where a silk dome is more like a rolling boil. It's a lot softer and smoother of a sound. And you know, these speakers, I, I think the best music for them is piano. I have never heard better piano on speakers before. Um, until, you know, until these things, I, I thought I'd heard good piano, but these really do piano well. It doesn't do metal music or, you know, anything that requires a lot of treble. And I'm talking like 15 kilohertz and higher. So like cymbals and, and things like that. Otherwise, yeah, these things are fantastic. I would highly recommend them to anybody looking for something like this. And not only that, but they are just, these are the most beautiful speakers, in my opinion, that I've seen in a very, very long time. I've seen some pretty speakers, but for whatever reason, the design elements of this, just the way they put everything together is absolutely beautiful. So uh, my summarizing thoughts, um, I'll just, I put together a pros and cons list here. I would say pros are high build quality. It has a braced enclosure. It has a really beautiful fit and finish, and they actually put good money into not only making it look good, but making it, you know, sound good. Um, aesthetic, because I, I love the look of these speakers. I really do. It has a warm and non-fatiguing sound quality where, like my Klipsch speakers, with them being horn drivers, they you turn the volume up, you get to hear all that cool, loud crash bang. And then after a few minutes of that, you're like, okay, let's turn the volume back down because you just get too much listening fatigue. Where with these, you just want to keep turning it up and up and up and up and you never want to turn the volume back down. That's, and that's what I really love about just listening to these. They're really awesome to listen to. Um, I think it's a good product for the cost 
the money actually went somewhere. It's just not, it's not going, you know, your money isn't going to this name. Your money is going into the product you just bought. And I think that's an important, that's an important thing for any product. I hate wasting money on brands and branding. And the last thing, it's, you know, small thing, but having that, the silver coating or silver plating on the braids here, you know, it's a small detail, but, you know, don't overlook the small stuff because that's what makes, when you add up all those little things, that's what makes the bigger difference. So the cons here, I'm going to say uh, low quality crossover components, uh, you know, that's, it's pretty typical to see this sort of stuff. You're not going to get away from it. It's just the way that it is. Um, the steel frame on the woofer and how badly it rings is definitely a drop. You know, it's a downside. I don't like it. They did make up for it by bracing the back of it, you know, bracing the back of the woofer with that brace. But yeah, I would have liked to have seen a plastic, uh, you know, molded plastic frame. I, the high frequencies, that 15 kilohertz and above, is a little too quiet. Even though these are silk domes and I just was praising how it kind of softens those high frequencies, I wish the frequency response would be a little bit higher at that very top end. And the last thing is limited availability, question mark. The reason why I say question mark there is because I was able to get these very easily and quickly, but I've heard from other people that they're hard to find, so maybe they finally got their supply line and their manufacturing up to speed just now when I'm buying it. And, you know, a few months ago it was limited. But, you know, so those are my thoughts. I think it's a good speaker. I'd buy one if I were you, because, I mean, I did buy it. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time.